Good evening. I was tagged by Todd's Tropicals to do an orchid tag video, and um, I wasn't really sure what an orchid tag video was. And I saw Roger's video and um, kind of had to go back and do a little bit of research on it, find out what was going on. And anyway, um, there's a dozen questions I'm supposed to answer, and I'm supposed to tag to other people. So um, let's go through this and see what we can do. Question number one was, what part of the world do I live in? I live in the United States, in the state of Alabama, and I live near the town of Birmingham. Um, our climate here actually is, give you a quick rundown on that, is um, from about, I don't know, mid-March, 1st of March, all the way through just a couple of weeks ago, I guess, about 1st of October, is beautiful weather here in Alabama. Um, warm, sunny, um, nice humidity. Usually on the dry side versus wet side. This year we had extremely wet conditions and several hurricanes. Everybody was part of that. Um, and we weren't alone in that. But um, typically we're a little bit drier than that here. This year was, was nice and wet. But um, it's a great place to grow orchids outside for that length of time. But um, And in the winter time during the cold months, um, pretty much, which is basically um, the tail end of October sometimes, November, December, January, February. <coughs> excuse me, January and February. It's, we get about a four month winter. Um, four and a half month winter or something like that but um even temperatures during those times can be in the 40s 50s and 60s and even occasionally in the 70s during the daytime and um, we sometimes will see lows in the single digits um, but um average temperature is probably you know freezing at night and um, just barely freezing at night or right above freezing at night and um 50 degrees during the for the daytime 50 55 or something like that for average which is nice weather in most places, but um, cool when you're not used to it. Anyway, that's a rundown in Alabama. Number two, how long have you been growing orchids? Can you remember my first orchid? Do you still have it? I bought my first orchid on November 4th, 2016, so in a couple of days it will be four, um, one full year. Um, the first orchid I purchased was a Phalaenopsis. <clears throat> and actually, um, that's it. That's the first one I purchased. It's been through several different media changes. It's been in every media there was. It fell a while back, and that's where it got the marks from it. But um, it has new growth, lots more new, new roots. It's very happy on that mound. Um, and new leaves, and another tiny little leaf. It has never bloomed for me, um, but that's okay. I don't mind. It was a rescue, and I, I honestly paid a dollar for this one. And um, this is, I'm real happy to have it. Really, really proud of it. Anyway, that was my first orchid, and yes, I still have it. To answer the question, yes, I still have it. Um, number three, what got you into orchid growing? Um, I guess about a year, year and a half ago, I was watching videos on YouTube and might have been doing some research or looking something up on a plant for some reason and happened to run across an orchid video and um, started watching more of them. And uh, I think some of the first people I watched were um, Bumblebee, Roger Frampton, Brad's Greenhouse, Oliver's Greenhouse, um, Miracle Orchids. There was a bunch of them I used to watch back then. and um, I loved how they grew. I loved, I loved the fact that they were hydroponically, you know, in, those, in, in that sense. And so to me, it was a very easy transition and something like, wow, there's something else I can grow because I'm no longer in the commercial uh, mixed design, you know, business or anything like that. So, and I didn't get to grow that much of the plants. I did more in the, um, I did more of the design stuff than the plant, actual working with the plants, but uh, it was a great opportunity and I really liked it, really enjoyed seeing the people at the greenhouses and stuff and because I have Parkinson's, I have limited ability and can't get out and do things and I'm always looking for something to do to occupy my time, keep me busy and that's where I count into orchids. What kind of grow space do I have? Well, this is one of them. I grow inside here in the room that I built. It used to be an old welding room has really nice ventilation, thick walls, it's well insulated. It vents out the roof, so it's um, to keep the fumes and stuff that were in here out of the way. It does have a great big window here. I've shown this room before in my videos. <clears throat> um, I love it. It's got, um, it's around nine by 12. It has two 600 watt lights in the ceiling, HID lighting, and I have metal halide bulbs in those at the moment, 600 watt metal halide bulbs. The ballasts are adjustable from 50% to 75% to 100%, so from 300 to 450 to 600, each one of them. Um, I also have a T5 four bulb light fixture, fluorescent light fixture hanging in the ceiling. Um, excuse me, T8, 
T8 light fixture hanging in the ceiling. And that's what we're using right now at this moment. <clears throat> I use it when I'm not using the big lights and the fans and stuff in here. I can put it on because it doesn't put off a lot of heat. And it gives me a lot of, a lot of illumination. Um, lights things up real well for me. And in the summertime, I grow outside in my shade house and um, on the patio, as everybody saw. This year, the improvement I'd like to make is um, if I were trying to get the patio covered with a big pergola, um, that's one of the things. But also, um, that building is being tore down in a couple of weeks where the staghorn used to hang. I said something about getting it tore down several times during the summer. And um, it's going to be tore down sometime in the next couple of weeks. And um, once it's down, then I can figure out what to do. But uh, I'm looking into either maybe a big shade house or a greenhouse or a combination or something so I can put all the plants out there and maybe um, make it easier for me to take care of them with the condition that I have. And um, I got a plan for the future too and um, limited mobility and stuff as I slowly get worse. So I need to be able to maintain them. And so we may even work on that a little bit. Anyway, work in progress, work in progress. Um, Number five, how many different types of orchids and what are they? I have a dozen, um, Cymbidium, Leia, Brassia, Brassivola, Dendrobium, Vanda, Encyclia, Phalaenopsis, Oncidium, Sulfurnitis, Rotonia, and Platella striata, the ground orchid. I counted that one as well, so that would be a dozen. Um, how many orchids do I have? <clears throat> Without counting all the babies as separate plants and, you know, flask babies all spread all over the place, it's around a, a 120. Um, and you could add, I guess, because I have some multiples. Um, so it makes a little bit, it, it adds up. I'll be honest that I counted this several times just from the sheer fact that I couldn't believe I had 120 orchids. Um, just wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'm considering a year ago I didn't own any orchid. But um, it's been interesting, I'll say that. Next one, number seven, top orchid gripe. Um, I guess misinformation. If I, if I was to have a, a bitch or a gripe, it'd probably be misinformation. A lot of misinformation, a lot of people just quoting stuff because they hear it and they, they take it as gospel, so they say, well, this is what you have to do. And it's just, it's not right. Um, don't, don't misinform people. It's one of the main reasons that I started doing videos was just so I can, um, I'd really put out good information. I'd really put out some information that's actually going to help somebody grow. Um, there's, it's hard to find good information out there. It's really hard to find, oops, sorry about that. It's really hard to find good information out there. Um, that's why I wanted to do it. Um, number eight, favorite place to buy orchids. Well, of course, that would probably be the discount table at the local garden center. Um, that's where most of my orchids have come from, is the discount table. I have gotten one, it's about six orchids, I think, that came from Carmella Orchids. They were very nice, very nice catlias. It was on a special they had. My wife surprised me with them. And they've been very nice plants. Um, but honestly, um, they had to grow all new roots and transition into my media, as they would anybody else's. And... Um, the bag babies and stuff that I've started with have gotten to the size of these and surpassed many of mine. Bag babies have surpassed my Carmelo orchids already. So um, I understand um, spending the money to buy good quality orchids definitely, it definitely pays off. It definitely pays off. But uh, I think you're better off buying a good healthy orchid, even if it's a smaller one, a healthy orchid I think is a better investment than a big orchid that's questionable. I think that should be more the priority. The bag babies that I have grow very, very quickly. With good fertilizer and stuff, they grow very rapidly and, and hit the size of most orchids that you pay 50 bucks for anyway. Um, let me see, number nine. Worst advice and did you take it? Worst orchid advice and did you take it? Um, again, I have experience in, in um, hydroponics, so I did not take the advice, but I think the one that bothers me the most that I hear all the time, the worst one out there is, your tap water is fine, is perfectly fine to use for orchids. Your tap water is fine. It'll provide all the calcium and all the um, magnesium that you will need. I think that's one of my biggest, not just orchid gripes, but that's probably one of the biggest um, worst advices that I think is out there. Absolutely, without a doubt. And no, I did not take it. <clears throat> Number 10, favorite orchid. Um, would again probably have to, I mean they're all my favorites and I do have some that are I'm a little more attached to than others because of um, 
how well they've grown for me or because of how uh, how well they came back from near-death experiences or something like that. You know, they were true survivors, but uh, I think that little fowl right there <clears throat> in the center that I showed you as my first orchid is probably still going to be probably my favorite orchid um, just because of its history. It's the first orchid I had and I'd like to keep it as long as I can. Number 11, or number 11, excuse me, orchid story. Let me move you right over here a little bit. <clears throat> So I can keep you keep you looking at something different, so you don't have to keep looking at the exact same thing every single time. Um, orchid story. <laughs> Again, I've only been in orchids for a year, and not really don't really have much of a a history or anything to build a story from. But um, I was at a Lowe's a while back, and um, I was looking at some of the discount files. There was file analysis on the discount table, and was looking at them, and. Um, one a lady was walked up and was standing there looking at some of them. She said, "What do you know what to look for? How do you know if they're even worth a, you know worth a dollar or something to get them? You know, worth the two dollars or whatever they were asking for them." And I said, "I look at the roots. If they have any decent roots, you can you, you can you have a pretty good chance with them." And she said, "You know, how do you where do you find your information at? Where can I get information?" She said, "There's not very good books on orchids, or do you know of any?" She was actually asking real good questions, and we started talking. I did not have a channel at the time. I was just starting a channel, but I hadn't started putting out a lot, and. Um, I just started putting it out, but um, I told her about, I mentioned the name Orchid Whisperer, Amy's channel, which everybody knows about that one, and um, another lady nearby who was listening in our conversation, I guess, said, I know who that is, Orchid Whisperer, she's great. Anyway, long story short, within probably 10 or 15 minutes, we had a half a dozen ladies all sitting there, and we were going through a quick phalaenopsis, moss breakdown, you know how moss breaks down, working on phalaenopsis roots and pH and stuff like that, in the middle of a Lowe's greenhouse with a bunch of ladies standing around and some husbands standing in the background just standing there with their mouths open listening to all everybody ask questions and we were talking and there was a lot of information going around and I was trying to help and uh, it was just a really neat moment and then 30 minutes later it kind of broke up and we all went our ways I was walking across the parking lot with my wife later on she said if I hadn't seen that with my own eyes I wouldn't have believed it and I, I told her I was thinking the same thing it was um, just a odd moment and just happened um, was happy to be part of it it was really interesting Anyway, that's my story. Not much, uh, but that's all I got. Number 12, what advice about starting to grow orchids and building a collection would you give? That's an easy one. Easy, easy, easy one. Water quality is the number one issue that everybody struggles with. Everybody struggles with water quality. Everybody. So before you bring the first orchid home, before you buy the first orchid, um, find a good, good source of good water. Um, invest in a pH meter and a <laughs> PPM meter, total dissolved, total dissolved solids, TDS meter, and test your water and find out if it's worth using before you bring the first plant home. If not, you'll struggle with the very first one, and that's disheartening. It'd be nice to bring the first orchid home and just have it just take off and just grow, and just all of them keep going from there. You stand a much better chance of that if you have a good quality water source. So find a good quality water source. Start with your tap water because that's free and you have it there. So obviously that would be the first one to start with. If it's not usable, you need to start finding another water source, whether it's bottled water or get an RO system installed or collect, collecting rainwater. Once you're set up and you have water, then you're ready to go. You know, it just makes more sense. So if I was going to give somebody, you know, here's how to do it right, yeah. And when you look in the books, they say very, very little about that. It's usually a couple of sentences or a paragraph, but very little ever spoken about water quality. So that would be the advice that I would give. Well, that's the 12 questions. That's my orchid tag. Um, I'm supposed to tag two more people. I'm going to tag um, Tropical Plant Party Jeff because he has an incredible channel. I want to know more about how he grows some of those orchids. He has some incredible, incredible orchids. Um, big fat orchids too. But um, I'd like to know a little bit more about that. Fascinating guy, fascinating. And I also want to tag um, Designer Orchids by Susan. Um, everybody should know her channel. And um, I tag her. She can do an orchid tag and then pass it along. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the wonderful comments. And um, I guess get out there and work in your garden. Have a wonderful evening.